Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. Before we get started this week, I'd just like to ask again if you have any questions for my 100 subscriber video that I'm about to put out. Uh, that I'll be releasing as soon as I hit that number. I'm at, I think, 95, 96 right now, so usually it'll take about three or four weeks from this point. But if you have questions for that, if you like have any questions about the channel or how I do my reviews or things that have changed since I started the channel, please feel free to put them in the comment section below if you see this uh, relatively soon after uh, this video is released. And this week I'll be reviewing Hurricane Season by Fernanda, I believe it's Melchor, and if I mispronounce that I do apologize. I'll be going briefly over the author's background, give a spoiler-free overview of the plot, talk about what I liked about the book, what I didn't like about the book, who I recommend the book to, and we'll finish off with what I will be reading for next time. Uh, Fernanda Melchor is a Mexican author. Uh, she's fairly well renowned. She has, has had won several different awards. She's been on list for you know, 40 authors to look for under 40. Uh, this book, Hurricane Season, is her most well-known book. Uh, it's been translated at least into English and German from the original Spanish, and she has won several awards for it. Um, but she's written, I think, three other books, uh, and this is the first of hers that I, that I have read. Uh, it is about a character known as the Witch, who is something of a an herbalist, uh, something of a seller of potions and, and cures uh, in a fictional town in Mexico uh, set in contemporary day. Uh, the book concerns really her, uh, that character's murder and what led up to the murder and the aftermath of her being murdered. And the book is told in kind of a fractured narrative that jumps around in time and jumps around between characters, um, but is all concerned about the, the death of that character. The book actually starts with the discovery of that character's body and uh, jumps around in town, in, excuse me, in uh, time. And as we go through the heads of these different characters who are all somehow related to this overall story. So I did like the innovativeness of this, of that. I think that I've reviewed other books for the channel that have uh, similar ways of telling a story um, Cactus League is something that comes to mind um, as something that's kind of these are all parts of a character story but this book as far as the leaps it in, takes in terms of chronological order uh, I thought were relatively well were well done um, I think that the style that the book is written in it's written in a very uh, cognizant of the punctuation that's being used uh, and the book is sometimes feels like gossip you would hear in a town and I think it really made this town come to life and make feel like a real place with people who are mentioned in different chapters but you never have a viewpoint of that character or those characters so you feel them as townspeople and you think you have a little bit of knowledge of them from one chapter to the next as you go from the viewpoint of one character to the viewpoint of another um, the very, very end of the book, I think, the last chapter of the book, I think is well, really well done. Really the first chapter and the very last chapter are both very well done. There's a sliver of, I wouldn't call it hope in the last chapter, but maybe respite. And I thought that that was nice to have after the, the book um, because the book is very, very, very dark and very, very, very bleak. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the con section. But I felt that the last chapter ended on a really even note of being acknowledging how dark the book was, but also giving you something to maybe uh, hang a sliver of hope on. Um, as far as things that I didn't like as much, uh, the book is translated from Spanish into English, so it's possible that some of the names may have changed, but I found that there were character and character relationships from chapter to chapter that were very confusing to me. Um, there would be characters who would be mentioned in one chapter and then we get to that person's chapter and I wasn't quite clear if this person was the same person that was mentioned earlier or not or if it was a different person, if it was a different person, what the relationship was to this other person. And that mostly happened in the middle of the book. Um, and some of that is due to similar sounding names, but it was also due to, I think, the author could have done a better job of including certain traits for characters so you would kind of be able to acknowledge the relationship a little bit sooner. And so there's two chapters in particular I felt that um, one of the chapters sets up a relationship uh, between two characters 
that's supposed to be one character is maybe more obsessed with the the other character excuse me one character is clearly obsessed with another character and you get to the other character's chapter and you're not sure if this is the object of obsession or not because it's not really mentioned for quite a while and i found that really difficult at times to i felt myself flipping back and forth and it's really not a particularly long book but i found myself flipping back and forth and seeing is this this character is this other character who is this person and so I felt that that was really frustrating, um, and I felt that that at times made the, the difficult, the story kind of difficult to to follow. I think overall, the overall plot, um, while the build up to it is interesting, and really the book is more about the lives of these characters and not so much the the killing of the witch character, uh, is the the thing that brings them all together. But that that actual plot of the witch and the witch's death is not particularly interesting. Uh, it's not really anything else that you couldn't summarize in about a paragraph, and that left the book feeling a little anticlimactic to me. Because even in, once you realize the whole story, there's a little bit of okay. So, and I think that the author realizes that and tries to bring in other characters and make their inner lives interesting and kind of show you where this led to. But I was maybe hoping for something a little bit more interesting at the end of the book. Um, I think that the book, this is, I guess, more, and those are really the main criticisms I have of the book as it's written. I think there is some nice work uh, in a couple chapters where the author is able to basically mid-sentence change the writing enough to give you an indication that the, the character is now speaking to someone else. Um, in a way that it's it's done really, really well. Um, I thought that for the people I would recommend this to, if you're someone who liked Day of the Locust and is not put off by unlikable characters or unlikable uh, situations, you may find, you may enjoy this book. I found it overall very, very unpleasant. There's a lot of just uh, things that would be trigger warnings uh, ahead Um that are really sensitive subject matters. There are murders. There is a case of child uh, sexual assault. There is an, uh, an abortion. So there's a, a lot of really sensitive subjects, all kinds of sex and drugs. And it, there's just a lot of, uh, there's a scene of described bestiality. There's just a lot of unpleasantness to this book. Um, and so for me, that was a, I didn't know very much going into it, uh, but overall, that kind of turned me off the book, even though that's really what the book is, and you either can go along for the ride or you can't, but overall, I just was kind of pretty turned off by it. I think if the overall, the underlying plot had a little bit been more interesting where I could kind of see the the point, if there was a point, um, other than just the unrelenting uh, bleakness of the, these characters' lives, um, that I think I would have maybe felt something deeper there, but it did feel at times that it was kind of misery for the sake of misery. There's not, like I said before, there's not really many, I don't think there are any really likable characters in the book. Everybody's kind of acting in their own selfish interest, and there doesn't seem to be any, uh, even characters who are in something of a position to be good people are not <laughs> good people in this book. Your mileage may vary on that. But if you're like someone who enjoyed Day of the Locust, and I'll put my link to Day of the Locust in the, in the show notes um, for anybody who has read this book and is interested in something of a similar nature. It's just very much, I think, a bleak view of the human experience, and I'm not saying that's necessarily right or wrong, but as far as enjoyment of the book, I, I think uh, I enjoyed the book less because it seemed to be fairly unrelenting. So that is uh, Hurricane Season, and next time I will be reading... Uh, Jeffrey Eugenides, uh, I mispronounced uh, Jeffrey Eugenides, excuse me, The Virgin Suicides. Until next time, please feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, like I said, if you are interested in submitting questions for the Q&A, please leave them below. Uh, until next time, bye.